Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of What's on My Desk. Today's episode is going to be about oldies but goodies as I call them and they're going to be from my favorite brand. You guys know I love Audemars Piguet. I'm completely biased. So I chose to go with some of the older pieces of Audemars Piguet because I continue buying and selling them because they sell. Uh, but it also will bring up a topic of resale value on older models and today's market trends when it comes to old versus new. I brought with me the Audemars Piguet Equation of Time Perpetual Calendar Sunrise Sunset Watch. That's a mouthful. I brought a plain Jane Turbion, a Jules Audemars Turbion. And I brought probably the number one selling limited editions made by Audemars Piguet, and that's the Rubens Barrichello in Titanium. I'm gonna kick things off with the plain Jane Jules Audemars Piguet Turbion. This is about as plain Jane as it gets. This is a manual wine Turbion. This, um, there's no frills or thrills on a dial. White gold, plain silver dial with Roman numerals, and the Accent is obviously on the Turbion cage. The Turbion cage is completely see-through. You can see that to the other side on this watch. And this is what this watch is designed to do. It's designed to show off the beautiful Turbion that Audemars Piguet makes. No chronographs, no power reserves, no additional functionality, just Turbion. And a couple of reasons that a company does something like this. For one, there are those that don't want a flashy watch, but there are those that don't want a flashy watch, but yet they want an expensive watch. And when you want to go expensive or as expensive as you can get, you go either mini repeater or you go Turbion. And a lot of those companies, they will make that plain Jane watch in order to satisfy the consumer that wants to stay plain, wants to stay under the radar, and wants to have a watch on his wrist that retails for $179,000 that does not look like a $180,000 watch. And this is what this watch is. Besides white gold, they also made this watch in a rose gold version. That one is a bit more flashy, but yet still it's plain enough. You can easily tell someone who has no idea what they're looking at that, hey, this is a $10,000 watch, and rightfully so, they will believe you because of how plain this watch looks. Looking at it from a side or from afar, again, for those that know that it's a Terbia will know. For most, they will just think this is just some plain Jane watch. And most likely won't even recognize that it's an Audemars because the jewels case from an Audemars is very comparable to pretty much any other dress watch case out there from any other manufacturer. It's about as standard as it gets. Now, there are cases also, and I guess I should mention that as well, a lot of times companies make these plain Jane watches when they have leftover Turbion movements that they have developed that they haven't put into other watches along with other complications. So when you have a handful of movements sitting in your factory that are worth a whole lot of money, what do you do? You put them in a plain Jane case and you make a plain Turbion and you price it reasonably. And I did say reasonably, although 180000 does sound like a lot of money, but it's still reasonable considering what Audemars watches are priced at when it comes to just plain chronographs or other turbines with complications and so on and so forth. Under 200,000 for an AP turbine in terms of retail is reasonable. Now let's flip the script and let's talk resale value. This is an older watch. This watch was produced probably about 10 years ago. What does it resell at? At $180,000 retail value, unfortunately it will resell for about a third of its price. So you're looking at this watch trading at about $60,000 today. Why? Many reasons. Number one, it's plain. And now the market trends are not about plain watches. A couple of episodes ago, that guy showed you the RM1103 McLaren watch, the big orange TPT case. I happen to have another one in stock today. So look at this versus this. It's night and day when it comes to these two watches. This is like 1965 and this is like 2050 when it comes to being different. And people today will prefer to pay up 300 some thousand dollars for this watch versus even paying $60,000 for a major complication such as a Turbion from a major manufacturer such as Audemars Piguet. And this is the fate that a lot of these oldies or goodies are suffering. And this is sort of the theme of today's episode. Prices are going down on older stuff and not because these are bad watches, just because trends change and today's trend, people want the latest and the greatest. They don't see the value in some of the older stuff that's out there. That's not to say that this stuff isn't sellable and that people are not buying this stuff anymore. There's a lot of people out there that are still going after some of that older stuff and they see the value, they see the deal that they're getting in some of these older models because of the current market trends. Which brings up the next Jules Automa that I wanted to show you today and that is the equation of time. 
Now you're saying to yourself, Amsterdam, so what if I'm in New York or somewhere else? Audemars makes a variety of these watches where they're set to different time zones, such as New York, Jeddah, Moscow, it's Geneva, et cetera, et cetera. And what happens when you buy one of these and you happen to be in New York, not in Amsterdam? Well, guess what? You can send it to AP and they will reset this watch to your local time zone for free for the first time. So as long as this watch is not on record as being having this bezel changed out as well as the watch reset to your time zone, you will get that changed over for free. Again, full perpetual calendar, month, day, date, leap year, year, blah, 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 blah. The equation of time, which is a little sun indication that shows you what the solar time is at the time. And I guess it's worth mentioning what equation of time is. It's probably one of the most confusing complications out there. Most people don't even know what it is. It shows you the difference between mean time and solar time. Mean time is the time that's kept by a machine such as a, such as a wristwatch. Or solar time is basically the time as it would look like if you were looking at the sundial. And again, in the region this watch is set to, meaning that if I try to test this out here in Philadelphia, it's actually not gonna work properly because it's set to Amsterdam. If I go to Amsterdam and I look at my watch and I pull out a sundial, that little sun indicator was actually going to show me more or less exactly what a sundial would show me at the time. How useful is that complication? Absolutely not useful. How difficult is this complication to implement? absolutely difficult. There's not a whole lot of companies out there doing equations of time because this is not an easy movement to make. And it really requires a master watchmaker with plenty of experience in order to put something like this together. Let's again talk resale value. Now, the retail price on this watch is not cheap. This is a full perpetual calendar with an equation of time, sunrise, sunset indicators, etc., etc. Originally retail for 83,500. This watch is already discontinued, so it's actually in today by today's standard this watch is probably retail over 100. What does it resell for? Again, about a third of its price. And the reason for that is because, again, this is a Jules case, not the most popular models from AP. This is an older model. And again, people don't care much for complications nowadays. Watch my episodes that I did on about is horology dead where people care for the latest and the greatest and something flashy and hot rather than something super complex and can't really appreciate the complication of an equations of time movement or that of a turbine that I just guys showed you. And a third of a price will translate this watch into that twenty-seven to thirty thousand dollar price range. In fact, I think we just sold the rose gold version of this for twenty-eight thousand pre-owned. Pretty sad, if you ask me, but that's the reality of the world that we live in today. People want the latest and the greatest. Uh, they don't want to go back, and oftentimes can't appreciate a complication of a movement such as that of an equation of time. But nevertheless. This is a hell of a pickup. This is a hell of a deal to buy. And if you're into horology, and if you're one of those geeky guys that it really gets into the nuts and bolts of watches, an equation of time such as this becomes a hell of a deal for you. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about my number one selling limited edition Audemars Piguet of all time, sort of like Rolex's Daytona, and this is the Rubens Barrichello. This came out at the peak of the craze of limited edition APs, like all the Schwarzeneggers, the T3s, the Ginzas, the uh, Montoya, the Grand Prix, uh, the t Malingis, the City of Sales, uh, and, and various Schwarzenegger watches. I can go on and on and on. There's so many limited editions that were made at that time, and they were all doing all so well and all trading at over list. This by far was the best looking one that they did. They did this as a tribute to Rubens Barrichello. They made this watch in titanium. They made it in a rose gold as well as platinum. I'll throw those up on the screens for you guys to see, but this was the, most, the number one selling one. This watch originally came out retailing at was it 28,000 and change. It was like $28,800 or something like that. And right off the bat, this watch was trading at $10,000 over its list price. It, was tr it started trading in high 30s right off the bat because the trio like the Montoya paved its way and showed the market that, hey, these things are gonna trade, I'm gonna trade high. So when this came out at the peak, right off the bat, right out of the gate, it was at over 10,000 retail. And then it started selling as high as $50,000. Comparable to what the Schumacher is actually doing today, the titanium Schumacher is pushing that $60,000 price mark. Uh, so it's kind of going in the, step, in the steps of the Rubens Barrichello. But this is the original gangster. This is the guy that set all records in terms of selling it over list. At the time when this came out, $45,000 for a titanium chronograph was a hefty, hefty, hefty price to pay. And still people were lining up to buy these things. 
market update on this well guess what not all oldies but goodies go down the toilet some watches become timeless and this is one of those watches that did become timeless the Rubens Barrichello is indeed timeless uh, today it still trades around that 30 to 35 thousand dollar price mark not 45 because did those watches did take an adjustment it did take a correction in the market because the market took a dump post crash not because this watch became less popular and they're still really hard to find especially complete with box and papers because you know it's been quite Quite some time and a lot of people either keep that special limited edition box or they lose it and so on and so forth uh, we bought this watch actually without its original box which diminishes the value greatly because collectors want these watches complete with the original limited edition box uh, the boxes alone sometimes trade upwards of twenty five hundred dollars which is some of the reason why uh, some owners don't even have the original box because they sold it off separately to sort of you know cash in on the box 30 to thirty-five thousand, depending on how complete this watch is is still super impressive in conclusion again some oldies but goodies you get a smoking deal on and they don't really hold their value all that well but some pieces do become timeless and they do continue to hold their value continue to hold their value well it's especially considering you're talking about something that's trading at 30 percent over its original retail value I was always back and forth in regards to what is my favorite limited edition AP prior to the Schumacher and prior to let's say the LeBron and I always had a, it was always a toss-up between the Barrichello and the Montoya and, and every time somebody would ask me that question I would think long and hard and I would tell them look I would go with the titanium Barrichello and I would go with the rose gold Montoya in terms of my favorite limited edition AP so yeah so there you have it this is probably my favorite limited edition AP out there do I think the, the current Schumacher blows it out of the water uh, it's different you know and if I had to choose between the two I would probably say it's not fair to compare the two I would have a difficult time choosing between this Barrichello and the titanium Schumacher well guys last but not least uh, I'm going to show you what's on my wrist and since we're talking oldies by goodies I threw on this Paddock 5035 annual calendar again one of those watches that's an oldie but a goodie this watch is over 10 years old and uh, again its value has diminished slowly but surely in fact all paddock annual calendars have kind of gone down in value and if you think about it it's pretty crazy what's going on in the market today you take a 5711 in steel that trades in mid 50s okay for a plain jane stainless steel watch because the market deems it collectible i told you guys none of these things are collectible and then you take an automatic annual calendar from paddock like this 5036 and it trades in a low 20s a watch that used to trade in mid 30s even as high as forty thousand dollars at one time but just goes to show you guys that with times trend change and as trends change so do values but keep in mind not all hope is lost because these trends are because the market is always like this it's always up and down some things are up some things are down and today's day and age again a 5036 annual calendar may not fetch a whole lot of money but you never know what the but you never know what the glass bowl holds 10 years from now and neither do I guys I hope you enjoyed this episode if you do like this episode make sure you hit this like button it tells me that you enjoy what I'm doing that you enjoy watching what I have to say don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber already and I'll see you guys next time for more watch reviews and other videos